Hi, I'm Heather Stanning. Um, I'm a major in the British Army and also a double Olympic champion in rowing. Uh, I haven't always rowed, I haven't always been in the army. Um, my interest in the military actually started when I was at school. Both of my parents were in the military, um, so I think it was a natural progression that I was interested. Um, speaking to the careers advisor at school, it seemed like an exciting um, career to do. When I left, um, I was drawn by the opportunities the military offered, um, especially the army. Um, opportunities for adventurous training, outdoor sport, um, and just challenges that I'd never had before. Um, however, I went to university before joining the army and it's there where I found rowing. Um, again, it was a challenge. I took an opportunity to do something new, never done before, um, hopped in a rowing boat, had no idea it would ever be any good, let alone be good enough to go to the Olympics. But um, I absolutely thrive on challenges. Um, a coach saw in me something I didn't know I had. Um, a bit of talent, I suppose, and um, he he challenged me. He he challenged me to see how good I could get, and um, kind of every day was a challenge, a new thing he would put in front of me. Could I do this? Could I do it better? Um, and I absolutely loved it. I thrived in the environment, um, and yeah, that's kind of where I started out. So you, you never know what's around the corner. You don't necessarily have to have started um, on your sport as a, t a kid. I was uh, nineteen twenty before I got in a rowing boat. Um, but also your career, you don't necessarily have to decide that you want to have a career in, in the military, in medicine, um, in teaching when you're kind of at school. You can, you can make your mind up when you're older. Um, there's so many skills that you can learn in, um, in all walks of life that are transferable and help you everywhere you go. So um, it's all about kind of giving things a go and taking opportunities. So my first experience of kind of working in a team in the military um, was probably in my military training at Sandhurst. Uh, and it was really important as a platoon, we learnt to work well together. Um, it wasn't about the individual, it was about us collectively going through the training together and learning how we as a team, um, as, a, as a platoon, um, got through the day-to-day -day training. It was really hard, um, everything was new to us. We had some people who'd never put military uniform on before to people who had done uh, maybe a bit of military service first. So had a whole plethora of um, people with different experiences. But the idea of the training is um, they kind of break everything down and everyone starts at a level playing field and build you up again together. So it was really important we work together, we play to each other's strengths. Um, and that's where I learned that you don't necessarily have to be the best in the team to be able to contribute. Um, being the strongest was great for me. Um, I was very fit when I turned up. Um, and I felt that I could add value to the team by being fit and strong. And I'm tall as well, so um, that, that kind of helped. But actually, there were other people who added huge amounts to the team. They were real thinkers, so when we were given a problem, they could think through the problem and then tell us what to do. So it was really important. We each played to each other's strengths. We didn't look at each other and go, well, you're not as fit as physically strong as me, therefore you're not going to be as much of a team player. Um, it was actually really important. We played to each other's strengths and, and worked together to get the best out of each other. Um, and I think as well, it's really important that you individually know what you can bring to the team. Um, to be able to work well with others, you need to know what you bring and where you can contribute. You need to be reliable. You need to be on time. You need to kind of show you're willing to um, accept other people for, for their strengths and weaknesses and accept them for their ideas. Um, just because you've got one way of thinking doesn't mean it's the right way. Um, quite often someone will think of something different and you know what, put it together and um, it might come out being the better idea kind of together um, collectively. So that, that's really important. Um, I found this actually crossed over a little bit into my um, career in rowing as well. So um, it's really important that you understand in a rowing boat kind of there's a team, you've got to work together. Um, you can't do it on your own. If you're the strongest person in the crew, that, that doesn't matter. Um, unfortunately, the boat will only go as fast as the slowest person. So it's really important that you get the best out of that person who you maybe think is the weakest link. Um, I certainly had experience in my rowing career where I had a period of time when I couldn't train as much as I wanted to. Um, I definitely wasn't as fit as strong as I wanted to. And um, I was in a pair. I rowed in a pair with Helen Glover for the majority of my rowing career. Um, and there was a period where I was definitely the weak link in the pair. Um, it's a really rubbish place to be when you're the weak link in a team of two, but um, that happens. But at no point did Helen make me feel like I was the weak link. It was really important she played to my strengths and um, we certainly got the best out of each other because of that. And we went on to win multiple medals during that time, even though I wasn't as physically fit as I should have been. So it's really important that you understand just because just you're in a good place doesn't mean that the team's going to do well. You've got to make sure that you're bringing the whole team along with you. Um, so that's my thoughts.
So kind of building on what I've kind of already talked about, about working well with others, um, goes on to contributing to a group. So it's one thing working well with people. There's another There's another thing about contributing to the group and kind of the group's aims and goals. Um, there's a way in tr uh, military training that is a really good way of bringing a team together and getting everyone to work as a team. And it's doing um, what we call leaderless tasks. So you're given a problem set and um, everyone's got to work together to kind of find the solution. Um, not one person can um, come up with the idea. You're given points on how well you work together, who contributes. And it can be little things from, you know what, one person's going to be the timekeeper. You've given five minutes to solve this problem. Perfect. Right. Someone who doesn't feel confident that they've got an answer and can help, they'll be put their hand up and say, right, I'll be the timekeeper. Straight away, they're contributing to the group and the group's effort to achieve their goal. And that's really important that everyone has their, their, their say and has their part to play in the team. I um, mean, you may have someone who comes up with the idea straight away, like, perfect, I can see how we can solve this. But it's really important you don't just jump feet first in with that one answer, because there might be another way, and there might be another way that's more efficient and more effective. So it's really important that actually everyone sits down and you have a conversation as a group first. So it's very easy for a leader to come in and kind of tell everyone how it's done um, as a team. But actually, collectively of a team, you can find a much more efficient um, and effective way of doing something if you all sit down and talk. Um, I'm not saying you have to sit down and chat for hours and um, kind of war game it out, but it's really important that everyone has their say on what they think they can do. So um, in terms of these leaders list tasks that we used to do, it was really important that you kind of, you'd go around the group and everyone would be like, right, I've got this idea, I've got that idea. I don't have any ideas, but I'll do this to help contribute. Um, so it's, it's important that everyone has, has their opportunity to say something and do something. Um, and that's exactly the same in sport. Um, you can't be part of a team if you're not contributing. Um, think about it in, a, in, a, in an eight. You can't have seven people doing the work and one person not doing anything. Um, it, it just doesn't work. Um, so it, it's really important that everyone is contributing where they can. Everyone will contribute to a different degree. Some people have, like I said before, everyone's got different strengths and weaknesses. Um, and some people's strengths will be better um, at different times. And that's fine. Um, as long as you're contributing to the best you can, it's really important. And that's what will make the team work the best it can um, and most effectively. Um, and that's how you'll get the most out of each other. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. Yeah, so a really important point to make about leaderless tasks is um, you've got no one person who's in charge. You've got to work collectively as a team to make this um, or to achieve this problem set. Um, and so the real challenge is when you've got conflicting ideas on how it can be achieved. Uh, how, how do you resolve that? How do you decide which which idea you take? Um, and it's important that you make that decision collectively as a team, that you don't one person doesn't kind of jump forward and say, You've, you're doing it my way and my way only. Um, and that's where actually, by putting different um, ideas and views together, you can sometimes come up with a much more efficient and effective way of doing the task. Um, but how do you resolve that? It's a real challenge um, and it comes down to personalities. Um, the key thing is knowing your team, knowing each other. There'll always be someone who has to come in, step in and be a bit of an arbitrator if you've got two people who have got um, conflicting ideas. But this is where if you know your teammates really well and you know what motivates them, and you know how they tick and you know how they think, um, this is what kind of helps that. Um, and that kind of kind of going back to the working well with others, um, I mentioned you've got to understand yourself and where you can contribute and what you can bring to the team. It's also really important you understand what other people have as well, um, because I understanding what they bring to the team, you also understand a bit more about them and how they're motivated. Um, and that's really important because when you come to times of conflict, you can understand what it is they want to get to and where they want to get to and how it is they want to get there. Um, and then you can work with them in that. If I carry on with this theme of um, the leaderless team um, and the, the task you've been given, um, which is what we used to have a lot in, in my military training, um, and we're moving on to kind of influencing a team. I look back at the, the person who said they would be the timekeeper. They're the person who kind of looked at the project and said, or the problem set and said, I'm not sure I've got a, a clear solution here. Therefore, my contribution to the team will be the timekeeper. They're actually a really influential person in the team um, because they're the person who's saying, yes, we're on time. No, we're not on time. Um, they're also the person who's stood back and looking at the whole problem as a whole. Um, and as people are kind of getting involved and working through the problem set, um, they can get too involved in what they're doing and they're not looking at the, the, 
the bigger picture. And the person timekeeping can actually say, this is working, this isn't working, right, it's taking you three minutes to do this part of the problem, you've got two minutes left, and we're not even 50% there. Um, work that out, right, we've got to move quicker. That's not working, you've got to try something different. Um, and they have a huge influence on the team um, and, ha and how the team um, pulls together and solves the problem without actually being the leader. Um, but then I suppose if you then come and look at leadership, um, something I've learned and something I've been taught through my military training is actually being the leader, you do need to step back. You do need to be that person who stands at the side occasionally and says, right, I'm looking at the bigger picture. Where is it we're trying to get to? How are we doing it? And are we doing it in the most efficient way? Um, so it's really important that actually you understand you don't necessarily have to be the leader to have the most influential part on the team. Um, but also as the leader, you do need to step back sometimes and have a look at the bigger picture. Cool. Um, so just as a final thought for me, really, um, OK, we've talked about d different strands of teamwork and, and the different levels. But actually, if you kind of look at it holistically, teamwork is about community. It's about working with others to either achieve an end goal or to better the situation you're in. Um, it doesn't have to be about um, a job like myself in the military. It doesn't have to be about sport. Um, but those are places where it's really obvious and really clear um where teamwork adds a huge amount of value but you can work well with your mates in class um whether it's doing a science project or whether it's kind of just making sure you turn up to school on time um work together to make sure you're all there to learn better um to then give yourselves the opportunities because actually being in school is the most exciting place to be at the moment and it's where the most opportunities are going to be given to you in your life and there's so many opportunities for you um you just need to kind of put yourself out there and uh, and grab them um, and don't be afraid. Some of them will sound really daunting and you'll feel like this is an opportunity for me. This is for someone else. But hey, give it a go. Um, you can be part of that team where you add a different dimension that no one else had thought of. And it's really important that you're not afraid to give it a go. So best of luck and thanks very much for listening.